unless you publish it. So as you see, if I save as draft, it just gives me the information that you don't lose the value. You can come back to it later. Let's say at the middle of my design, I actually go back to uh, organization administration. After a couple of days, uh, I come back to the hierarchy. You notice that the Seahorse retailer is here. I can view it. And uh, unless you don't click on the edit, you don't see anything. As soon as I click on the edit, you see that it says that, oh, you do have a draft. Would you like to work on that? Or would you like to delete and then start a fresh one? Since I do have a draft, I just want to open that up. So you notice that as long as you haven't published it, it just sees it as a draft version. That means it has no effect whatsoever. Let's go ahead and publish this from effective date, let's say, of January 1st, uh, 2013. Again, the time zone matters uh, for demonstration purposes. It really doesn't matter here, but based on the time zone of the legal entity or perhaps where you would like to use this hierarchy, then you have to set that up. I click publish, and now you do have an organization hierarchy. So if I switch back to it again, you notice that the hierarchy is appeared. But what do I do with this? There are different purposes that are available. First, let's take a look at the purposes button. Right from here, you could assign a purpose to this hierarchy. When I open it up, these are existing purposes that are available off the shelf. That's one way to assign basically your hierarchy to each purpose. Another way to do this, which I come back to, is closing the hierarchy designer, go back to the organization administration, expanding the setup, and opening up organization hierarchy purposes. If I open it up, it's showing the same exact window. Up to 6.0, which was original X2012, you had only uh, up to the security. Then uh, R1 or Feature Pack 1 added a couple of more for retail. But in R2, you actually see a lot more. Okay, so let's explain what they are. Consider these purposes as something that Microsoft already offers part of the package. And I walked through it very quickly. I do have a video, which is, I think, available as well, that gets into the detail of the policies. But I quickly show you some of these. So consider these as policies within the organization, as well as reporting scenarios. So let's just start from the top, go down, and then I kind of do a quick demo as well. Procurement internal control refers to procurement and sourcing. Even though we are dealing with financial service here, I like to also demonstrate a bit of a procurement and sourcing, which is part of supply chain training. What does this purpose give me? It tells me what can I do. Like for example, if you have an item, what can I do with that item? Can I buy it? If I can buy it from what vendor? If I buy it from that vendor, would it be required to ask a particular question from the vendor before I buy it? There are so many different policies that you could assign. So these policies are already built in, but what the hierarchy can do for you you can actually assign a different policy per each hierarchy. I think it's a lot easier to see it rather than discussing it. So just bear with me a few more minutes, you're actually about to see that. So procurement and sourcing, which controls how you can purchase things. Expenditure internal control is about travel and expense management, like your policies about travel and expense. Let's say you have a policy about meal expenses. Your manager has said, whenever you travel, you have only, uh, let's say, $50 worth of uh, availability for food. By the time you put your travel and expense, uh, you can put 75 And then automatically, based on the expenditure internal control and policy, you could just have rule to say, well, I don't accept it, or say, I do accept it, but you have to justify it. So automatically, the screen will change. So that would be for travel and expense management. There are so many other rules, of course. I'm just giving you a tip of an iceberg as an example. Uh, signature authority internal control is about a limitation of how much money can you spend or how much money can you allow an employee to spend. That's part of organization administration. Uh, so let me minimize this very quickly and show you where that is. You see, organization administration does have indeed signing limit. And the signing limit policy tells you uh, exactly how much money can you spend or how much money can you authorize for other employees to spend. And this signing limit actually is pointing to this signature authority internal control, which is you can set it up in a client, but you can only work with it in an enterprise portal. Like I said, I have a, a specific video just designed for these policies. Call it vendor payment internal control is when you have already received an invoice from a vendor, you registered it into the system, but you don't allow, perhaps based on your policy, to pay for it because somebody has to approve it, for example. Or based on a policy, you just want to allow certain vendor payment to be issued, not everything else. Again, based on what hierarchy. 
audit internal control goes back to the compliancy, which is there is a compliancy module for centralized payment is mandatory to have three steps. If one company like GLMF, based on our hierarchy, wanted to pay for USMF and Seahorse Retailer, you have to have a hierarchy created first. That's the first step. Second step, you have to establish into company. And the third step, you have to say exactly uh, what type of a rule and methodology would you like to use as far as the cash discount or any other method of payment that you have. So centralized payment tells you exactly you must have at least one hierarchy in order to be able to pay for other legal entities. There is one hierarchy for security, of course, if you could wanted to have like policies for security. And then retail introduced so many other policies there for you, like assortment, what a specific uh, product can be sold where. Like let's say you have heard on perhaps commercials, this product is only available on, on online, not on a store. So these are assortment examples. Uh, as far as payroll, which is added to the uh, AX 2012R2, you see that the benefit eligibility control has been added here as a policy. Uh, budget planning, again, has been added back to AX 2012R2. It was already part of uh, 2009, but it came back with much more functionality, of course, in R2. Uh, you do have budget planning policy and hierarchy. You can assign exactly how you could uh, basically specify planning for your budgeting based on the particular hierarchy as well. For pause or point of sale and reporting, uh, what type of a transactions could come to the headquarter. And finally, for the project management and project accounting, you do have these specific purposes. These are off-the-shelf purposes in R2. And let's just view some of the activity within the hierarchy, see the benefit of the hierarchy. Needless to say, by the way, I just wanted to add one more thing. There is a utility called management reporter. Uh, can actually report based on this existing financial hierarchies now. I like to add retail store, if I select this, you see there's a grid checkbox available here. I add